getting some animal assistance from another world. Here's your look at the brand new 30 Transformers Rise of the Beast DLX Bumblebee. Transformers Rise of the Beast, DLX Bumblebee, faithfully reproducing the movie's design in every detail and appearance, carefully depicting Bumblebee's stylish new bot mode, DLX's Bumblebee's eye components on the battle head, feature interchangeable dual red and blue LED lights and includes interchangeable dual arm ion blasters equipped with LED light-up effects, perfectly capturing Bumblebee's battle mode. The wheels on the body are made of soft rubber-like material with added weathering effects. The highly articulated DLX Bumblebee has cleverly designed joints, allowing for seamless and extensive range of motion throughout his entire body, including the rear wings that can replicate their folded and unfolded positions. The action continues with 3-0's renowned craftsmanship and weathered paint applications, fully replicating this heroic Autobot. This time B is getting a little help from the Beast. Before we get a closer look at the brand new Transformers Rise of the Beast DLX Bumblebee, I'd like to first thank the folks over at 3.0 that did provide the sample we could have a look at. B is slated to release, by the way, the fourth quarter of 2023 for, again, an unbelievable price of $169.99 or about $170. Well, let's go ahead and grab the tape measure and see how tall the figure stands. Now, I don't know if I will count the back doors as that being the highest point of the figure, simply just because you can move those doors around. With only just factoring in his head, DLX Bumblebee stands 8 inches in height, or the figure's going to be about 20 centimeters tall. As for comparisons, I thought seeing as we're looking at DLX Bumblebee, why not we bring in MDLX Bumblebee, which would be the slightly smaller version of, of course, everybody's favorite Autobot. In this case, you can clearly see that neither one of these really belong on the shelf together. Obviously, if you guys are going to be collecting, say, the movie tied-in figures, then may, it may not be the case that you're going to be displaying the figure along with the MDLX Bumblebee. In this case, the MDLX only goes to about his mid-thigh. Just before we jump over, though, to the figure's accessories, a couple of things I did want to start this review with was, first of all, to show you guys the instruction booklet that comes included with Bumblebee. Always is the case when you look at high-end collectibles like this, whether it be 3-0 or not, always very carefully go through the instruction guide first, as it does certainly point out some of the things that would be ever crucial about the figure, like, for example, his available posability, which he does have a lot of, and also, more importantly as well, to how, how to install the batteries. Now, the batteries in this case, Bumblebee takes quite a lot of them. I think he to takes a total tally of about six batteries when it's all said and done. Actually, no, he includes eight. Two for the battle head, or two for the regular head Bumblebee, two then for the battle head, and then two for either one of his arm cannons, giving us a total tally of eight. Again, like the AG-13 batteries are not, though, included with Bumblebee, so that's going to be something you're going to have to pick up for yourself. Move, though, the instruction guide, though, out of the way. The figure also comes included, like other MDLX, other DLX releases from 3.0. This very elaborate-looking display stand. I think we have, in fact, gotten this stand before. I'm certain we have gotten this display stand looking at several of these already in the past. But you can see, in this case, they've actually printed down below here, Transformers Rise of the Beast, with 3.0 logo just above it. And always this is the case, you get yourself an adjustable neck that actually adjusts in two places. First of all, you can move the neck forward and back. If you want to get to the desired look that you want, simply just lock that in place and the neck doesn't go anywhere you can then also as well extend this out too if again you want a higher reach for bumblebee and you, all you really then have to do is take this and depress it a little bit to then retract it back inside the cavity of the chamber this does attach onto the back of bumblebee's body but i'm saying a lot of bees this time around if you flip around to the back of the figure located just at the base of his spine you just remove this piece right here Probably not the best places to be plugging in a plug, but you can see like this square peg, for example, will nicely then plug onto the, the peg on the end of the display stand. One thing though, just before we actually do that, just get the Bumblebee to stand here. You can also detach this because this doesn't actually move up and down freely on its own. Because it does actually have like little teeth, you can see kind of making up the majority of its diameter. You have to actually take this off first, move it up to where you want to get the desired look. And then from there, I might actually just pop this back up for right now and just move it down just a little bit there we go and then you're going to take yourself your bumblebee and plug it onto the back of the figure's body because this figure is the size that he is even though he's die cast or not the bumblebee actually still manages to balance quite well on top of the display base if you though have seen the movie 
Bumblebee is airbound, a couple airborne a couple of times throughout the movie, more so near the end. So yeah, it does make more realistic purposes for, of course, to have the stand included with Bumblebee, as that's a good way of displaying the figure on the shelf. Maybe a little more interesting than what I've got right now. And of course, we will talk more about the posability that this figure possesses in a moment. Moving now over to the figure's accessories. Bumblebee, though, doesn't come in clue with much, other than his ion cannon blasters that, of course, then swap out with the existing forms that he has. He also has an alternate battle helmet look, and not to mention as well, three pairs of interchangeable hands. I know technically you only really see the two, but don't forget you have to count the fists that are also attached onto the forearms, as those are the defaulted hands when you first take him out of his plastic tray. Technically as well, the figure also comes in clue with uh, movable doors, as that is something also I've already taken the liberty of adding to the back of the figure's body. So I'll also show you guys how that works in a second. First though, let's go back at least to the hands. The hands themselves that 3-0 have packed along with B, you get yourself semi-relaxed hands. Uh, these ones are a little bit more, I suppose, of a gestured hand. Or I guess if you just wanted to have the arms sort of draped to the side of his body, these would fit the bill rather nicely. All of the consistent yellow that you'll see in Bumblebee painted extremely well not to mention the darker gunmetal gray that they use for all of the hands even like the intricate detailing that they put sculpted on the inside of the hands so quickly can be forgotten when you just look at the fact that he comes with interchangeable hands and then you just put them to the side no no we really have to factor in how much work even goes into just sculpting the hands as well for bumblebee you get these hands and then you also get these hands which i guess you could more consider to be dynamic hands Judging, of course, by the way the thumb's sticking out like this. The thumb seems a little out of place being as far out as it is right now. I probably would have had a little more angled this way. But I do like the fact that he gets himself some more dynamic looking hands. And of course, we'll move those all to the side. The figure also, like I said, does come in clue with his ion blasters. Iron blasters do make up one of the things that involve you installing the batteries. The batteries, like I said, are not in, are not included with Bumblebee, so you have to pick up those for yourself. I picked up just recently, in fact, a whole tray of AG13 batteries on on like Amazon, and it probably set me back about ten dollars. But I'm good to go for a while. Bumblebee though does eat up about eight of those batteries. Well, he does eat up eight of those batteries. Two each batteries go into the ion blasters to actually gain access to them. First of all, you have to remove the end of it. And this what, what this ends up doing is it reveals then the screw cover. So you're going to have to unscrew this and then you have to take this piece off. Once that's off, put in your two button cell batteries and then, of course, go back and replace the, the panel piece just to cover over the front of it. From there, the only way to activate this is actually clever. You just press the front of it. And that illuminates not only the center ring in, in orange, but all these smaller little circles in orange as well. It's a really nice effect. Might I also just say too, it's an easy thing to press. I don't have to worry. I have to take this all off, disassemble it essentially to get to a little switch inside. 3-0 just made it a lot easier by just making a button be something that's depressible. You just press the front of it, turns on, turns off. I like the look of those. Now, of course, just the detail alone on these, all the nice gunmetal gray, again, that consistent yellow, so well painted on all of these pieces. These will eventually swap out those forearms and we'll pop those back in place in a second. The other thing that the figure also comes included with is his battle helmet. The battle helmet, again, requires button, button cell batteries. Now with this, you actually just want to be careful of his antennas. You want to pull the whole back canopy off and that removes it, showing you then the button cell batteries on the inside. There is the switch there on the front. You'll be happy to know as well, you don't have to take the canopy off every single time you want to press this. They have actually put a little button where the Autobot symbol is. By the way, though, while you are putting this back in place, just be careful of these little side, side little stri strips of plastic as you don't want to buckle these by accident. Just again, we're going to pop that in place. If though, if you have it successfully low enough, all you do then is press the Autobot symbol on the front and it does turn on his lights. First of all, you have it in the more friendlier blue. But if he gets a little more angrier, simply just press the button again and it now illuminates. Not so much as a red, kind of more of a warmer orange. But the fact that they actually had a two light feature where again, like you would just be able to alternate between the blue, the more orangey red, and then you switch it again by pressing the same button again. There's again the Autobot logo there on the top, a very well painted overall battle helmet, battle alternate face that the figure also comes included as well. Of course, it does have the little antennas, so just be careful of these. These ones are actually, based on the way they've designed it, sit a little tighter on this helmet than it does on this one that we're about to have a look at. So these ones are a little harder to kind of push down, with really the idea anyways in mind that you're probably going to always have them up anyways. So there's his alternate helmet as well. 
I did already say the fact that the figure does have also doors that have to be installed on the back of the figure's body. These doors uh, do plug in place, though a little difficult to do. And this actually, by the way they've added the articulation to the wings, these doors do fold down, first of all. Now, this one's a little looser than this one, but you can have the doors, say, down, for example, as a configuration. You can also bring them up. Or you can also even as well bring them out too, if you want to have them that way. One other additional feature is the fact that the doors do have two configurations to them. And while still using that hinge of going back and forth and up and down, you can really get it to the desired look that you want. I always myself consider Bumblebee to have the wings together, the doors together. But if you did want to have the doors fanned out, that's available option as well, courtesy of the folks over at 3.0. So again, we'll just close up those doors. Now getting a closer look at his head sculpt and the last place, of course, the batteries have to be installed. The battery compartment works the same way that you're just going to take the top of this and pop this up. This one was a little harder to do because I was worried the whole time of bending the, the antennas. But this just lifts up and then you've got your battery compartment inside. This one's a little harder, like I said, to pull up, but you can see like there's the button right there to press. Now again, with the button working the same way as the battle, battle helmet, carefully, carefully putting this back in place. You want to make sure that everything is lined up and you want to make sure, of course, the other thing as well is that you're not bending down the antennas. There we go. Okay, so the antenna is now in place. Again, you're going to take your Autobot logo and you're going to press this in. And this illuminates a very bright blue. Much brighter, in fact, than the battle helmet just because, again, it's got the lenses over top of it. Let's just switch this on so you can see the difference between the two. Yeah, you can see like this one's a lot brighter because you're basically exposed directly to the, the bulbs in the eyes, whereas this one has sort of more of a lens over top of it. But again, like very brightly blue. The only thing about it, though, is like tallying up already eight batteries. This guy does take a lot of batteries in order to get the, to get the job done. But I got to say, like once everything's in place, it's nice to be able to go and illuminate the eyes of Bumblebee. And of course, do the exact same thing with the ion blasters as well. Head sculpt wise, while we still have the eyes lit up, you can see how well of a job 3-0's talented team have sculpted B's head. Classic, like the way he looks in the film, of course. Bumblebee does change his look a little bit in the movies, but his helmet always, his face always sort of remains somewhat the same. He's got some nice metallic silver on the front of it. I do also like the little touch of detail by adding these tiny little strands of silver around the areas of his eyes as well. Of course, he's got the Bumblebee logo, the Autobot logo on the front of his face, and tiny little antennas that do also come up. This antenna is a lot tighter than this one. This one is a little looser for me, so I'm going to have to be a little bit careful with that. But overall, like overall, just a great looking rendition of Bumblebee. And of course, it doesn't just stop by his head. That The sculpting of then the rest of his body, you've got the front there of the Camaro. Now, these some of these pieces actually do move around. This one, not maybe as much, but there are a little, few little areas where you can actually just hinge these out. To, again, a little more of that look that he has in the movie. All this additional, all this additional chrome and all this additional gunmetal that they've used and painted onto the figure's body, like most of it again is die cast. All these little panel pieces, for example, are plastic. The parts that are on his shoulders, for example, are plastic. I think like most of the majority of his arms are probably a plastic as well. But really, where you feel the die cast, especially cool to the touch, is like his torso, his legs, mostly the frame of his legs, and then the majority of his, like even his feet. His feet are big, blocky, chunky pieces of metal. Uh, the tires, by the way, also is one thing I wanted to point out and bring to your attention. They're actually using more of a softer material. I think they're actually more of a rubber, but you can see that they've added a little bit of distressing, uh, adding a little bit of a wash to it. So like the tires themselves look a little dirtier, especially the one that you see on the side of his legs. And all of these, again, have things on them that move. You can actually turn the tires around if you want. You can also hinge them back and forth if you want. There's always something new that you're going to be discovering when it comes to these DLX releases by 3.0. Again, just to spin this around so you can see like all the finer work that they sculpted to this piece, like all the little cool nuances that they carried carried over from the character design from the movie. All this additional. Now we've got some additional uh, rusting color there on the back, some red to an otherwise again mostly yellow, mostly silver, mostly gunmetal gray. For the figure's articulation, and I guess just before we look at the figure's articulation, one thing I did want to do also as well is just let's fold these down for a second. I'm going to pop the head off from Bumblebee right now. There we go. And we're going to replace it with what I just realized now. I left the lights I left the lights on. We're going to pop onto the battle helmet if you did want to get that look for Bumblebee instead. And also, let's just turn this off for right now. If you wanted to change the arms, let's say, for example, you want to swap these out to the ion blasters. One little bit of caution that you should be treading lightly with is when you're changing the arms. I'm just going to fold these wings down here for a second just to kind of get them out of the way. When you grab the arms, for example, 
there's a ring right here. Can you see the little loose ring? This ring is actually supposed to sit inside of the forearm. And when you do pop this arm off, this Pro, this is very prone to actually coming off as well. So when you are removing the arm, for example, you want to just make sure like this ringlet also comes as well. You don't want to leave this. You don't want to drop this. Just to put the figure down here for a second. This little ring, for example, is supposed to sort of sit here, but I don't know why it had to be a separate piece, for example, but there's been a couple of times already I've like popped Bumblebee's arms off and this tiny little ring has ended up onto the floor. Then we're going to take ourselves one of the blasters you don't you could use both certainly if you want to literally it's just the case you're going to take the post that's on the end feed it and navigate it into the hole that's provided on his forearm and then slot it in place couldn't it be any bit more easier than that and i guess technically as well you could also do the exact same side what i might just end up doing if you'll excuse me though is i might not just swap out both of them because of course when we want to look at the figure's articulation i want to be able to show you guys the hands i can't obviously do that if the ion blaster is on both sides so for the figure's articulation, let's just move back up his door wings here. We're going to start back with his head sculpt here, which is on a ball joint, but it's in a ball joint in two clever places. One is right here. I'm going to do my best to not get my finger in the way of things. There's a ball joint right here that allows the head to independently move. But more of the freedom comes with actually the base of the neck, where you can actually move it a lot more than just that. The body, now just again, be careful of the doors. The, this part of the body actually does crunch forward and back. So that's nice to see. And it also does rock back and forth this way also as well. The only thing about it though, is you will want to be careful you're not putting a lot of pressure on the front grill of the car. And especially the fact that these little move, these move independently on, also on their own. You don't really want to put pressure against those. But then the figure also does have, in addition to that, a, a hinge joint right here that for a second I didn't notice that was there because I just assumed it was part of the thighs. But there is actually a ball joint right here, tucked underneath sort of where his waist would, would basically be. That can also move back and forth this way as well, and you can rock it back and forth this way too. As for the arms, the arms do rotate. Now, the thing about the arms is just be careful of these little pieces of plastic. You want to make sure that you don't clip those in the process. Now, again, like the moves, the arms move forward and back. You can also somewhat move the arms outward as well, just to give a little bit of extra clearance. But you want to be careful, again, that you're not be clipping that little piece of plastic. Arms do hinge out. Now, these shoulders are also something that does move independently, too. So you can hinge those also out as well, just to get a little more freedom a little bit more luxury with actually the way that you bend the arms outward. The figure does have a swivel in his bicep. The figure also has a swivel in his arm. And then in between the two is met with a double hinge. So you can bend it right there as well. And again, this is the reasoning why I didn't want to swap out both the ion blasters. Just because again, it'd be giving me a chance to then go in and rotate the hand. The thing about the hands though, is that because he does have this longer guard in the front of his forearm, it makes things a little bit harder to rotate the hand. So while you can rotate it back and forth and up and down this way, you're not going to really be able to clear a full rotation just because, again, you're going to be lip hitting those little lips of plastic on the front of his forearms. As for the legs themselves, let's just bring back his body just a little bit. The legs do split out. You can take the legs and move them forward to all almost a full, I guess, a 90 degree angle bend. You can also take those same legs and rotate them back. A lot of weighted die cast in this figure. There's a double hinge there also in the knee. Clever the way they took actually the kneecap and sort of divided the territory of the hinges on both the sides. And then when it comes to his feet... The feet move up and down this way. It's a little harder to actually kind of get access to the feet. But the feet move forward and back. Very difficult, though. And you can also rock them back and forth this way. The whole time I'm being very cautious because, again, like the tire is right here. I don't want to actually bend the tire against. Well, again, like you can hinge the ankle this way back and forth. And the figure also has toe articulation also as well. So, like, there's a lot of good stuff going on here with Bumblebee. For me personally, while I do always love the fact that a company like 3.0 take the time to include the accessories that they do with these figures, personally for me, while I do like to look at the battle helmet myself, I will still likely default, I think, to regular Bumblebee. And just because, again, as well, if you decide you want to swap back to the way that Bumblebee normally looks throughout the course of the movie, with, again, his light-up eyes, love the look of those, uh, doesn't mean necessarily you have to commit to the idea that the ion blasters always have to go with this battle mode. You could do, like I've just done, have only like one of the ion blasters on one of the sides of the figure's body and keep the regular forearms on the other. It's really entirely up to you. You can have dueling, for example, ion blasters. You can have just the regular Autobot hands. Again, you can do a little bit of both. There's a lot of customization really posable here. Really, even though there's not a lot of accessories that come along with Bumblebee here, it's a really nice rendition, courtesy of the folks over at 3-0.
So if you were a fan of Transformers Rise of the Beast and you like to get yourself the Bumblebee from that movie, he is though again slated to release the fourth quarter of 2023 for again an unbelievable price of only $169.99. Considering for $170 you're getting a die-cast framed Autobot, doesn't though transform but really none of the three zero Transformers transform, and if you're one that never really wants to transform them anyways into their alt mode, what's the reasoning why they have to always transform? For me, at least, at the end of the day, I really want an Autobot or Decepticon, for that matter, to be good on a shelf without the need to always go back over and turn them into something else. 3-0 are continuing to knock it out of the park with the detail and the exquisite paint that they put to these pieces, and Bumblebee, again, is no exception. Uh, again, $170. Granted, the figure doesn't come in clue with much in the way of accessories. Not, say, the, like, the likes of Optimus Prime, another figure that we've also looked at in the earlier reviews for 3-0. But at least the figure comes with dual blasting, dual ion blasters, and he comes with some swappable hands and an alternate head sculpt. For me, right now at least, I've got the figure displayed in more as battle mode, but I'm likely going to be reverting the kinder Autobot back to the way he normally looks in the movie, as the figure looks, though, fantastic. As a side note, though, I think this is one of those Transformers that I've looked at from 3.0 that has probably used the most batteries. Again, looking at the instructions, funny enough, though, I had six of those AG-13 batteries when, I, in fact, I needed eight. Uh, so I did just simply go on to places like Amazon. Amazon's the best place to get button cell batteries. I ordered it, and I feel it was delivered even as early as the next day. And then from there, I just had to put it in. I think it was the other Ion Blaster that I decided to forfeit the batteries for. I just put the batteries back in there, and we're, again, good to be battling Predacons. Was it the Predacons or the Decepticons? I think it was the Predacons. What do you guys, though, think of Bumblebee here? The DLX version of Bumblebee. And also, as well, what did you guys think of Transformers Rise of the Beast? All in all, again, it's like one of those popcorn flicks Transformers that likely at times you probably just forget after you've seen the movie. It has all these Autobots and Decepticons, or in this case, Predacons, that they introduce and then quickly, like, they have no dialogue whatsoever. I don't even think Rhinox. Did Rhinox have any dialogue? I think, I think Cheetor said one thing, but Rhinox basically just moved in and out of the screen. And that was the only time that we saw him. But again, what did you guys think of Transformers Rise of the Beast? Let me know down below in the comment section. Once again, though, a big thank you to the folks over at 3.0 that did provide the sample of the brand new Transformers Rise of the Beast DLX Bumblebee that we had the chance to have a look in this review. If you guys enjoyed this video, want to hit with a like. If you guys are loving the content you guys are seeing, and you certainly do want to stick around for more, make sure if you haven't already done so that you hit that subscribe button down below. And hey, why not? Turn on the bell notification. It will help you so that YouTube can tell you the friendly reminders on a regular basis every single time the person behind the camera, hey, that's me, is always posting new content. Got a little bit of time on your hands? You want to check out some more from 3-0? All right. Popping up the very end of this video, my friend, will be also a playlist of all the things I've also looked at from 3-0 over the years with many more to follow. Of course, as always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.